Hi, it's Andy. Hi, it's Dave. Hi, it's Kirk. Okay, so today we are checking out the new album by the band Iron Void. It is entitled Four, in i.e. Roman numerals, Four. So, fourth album, I'm assuming, and I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah, uh, it is. It is. Now, normally what we'll do is we'll go in pretty much the channel alphabetical order, Andy, Dave, Kurt. But I figured, as Andy was the one that suggested that we check this album out, we should go in reverse order. And kick it off with Kirk today with his thoughts on the new album. You, off, over to you, mate. Oh, okay, so this is a, a band from Wakefield, West Yorkshire. Formed in 1998. Didn't put out any recording until 2008. Uh, I had a quick look at the, the band's history before I reviewed the album. Reformed in 2011, I believe, and been quite productive over the last decade. This is their fourth album, evidently, with the, uh, with the title uh ooh, doom metal and i'm always very clear on uh, what kind of doom metal which sometimes will baffle people because most will assume that doom metal is just a <coughs> genre based on on black sabbath these fall more into the rockier version of doom metal like candlemas uh and trouble rather than the heavier more ethereal version of doom metal which even goes towards post metal doesn't it when you get the more avant-garde approach so no surprises on this album very easy to listen to the 44 minutes of it uh there's 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 two or three songs that stand out which are excellent and the rest just gives you what you expect so that's never a good thing really is it where you can you can almost anticipate what the songs are going to be like um the the first song that stood out for me is grave dance i looked at the lyrics clearly that's an attack on the central governments of the world including the united kingdom government and the power grab during the the scare and then the subsequent trauma you could say of of covid19 and the quarantines and yeah governments really did use that didn't they um some will defend them and say they had to to ensure that covid didn't rip through the population and kill uh hundreds of thousands <coughs> that, that, that that really rocks out that it reminds me of trouble i always hark back to this band that, that are from from chicago to me they are the kings of, of modern doom metal in the 1980s they really get it up and running again don't they with that band saint Beatus. excellent bass playing in this song if, if you're just expecting pentatonic blues rock riffs with fuzzy distortion and drums in common time give give put your headphones on and listen to the bass there and it's the vocalist Jonathan Seal isn't it that's playing bass and singing really expressive gives it a prog element so my main criticism of this album is almost every song I'm thinking which Black Sabbath album does it borrow from <laughs> I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you an example L Living on the Earth track number three I was just I was thinking yeah Sabbath bloody Sabbath is it a national acrobat or Sabra Kadabra that they're paying homage to on the next song after that Pandora's Box I was thinking, okay, this is volume four by Black Sabbath. So that's happening too many times during the listening process where I'm just linking it back to a Black Sabbath album. If not that, trouble. But to be, if I'm being kind, there are some subtle prog elements to this. That band, Psychotic Waltz, who were a bit of a cult band in the 90s, one of the few non-death metal bands produced by Scott Burns. And then the, they split up in the, in the late 90s, got back together just before COVID and put out a really good album. Um, there's elements of that in there as well. The last song as well, Last Rites. Proggy, I like it. It's one of the few songs that's got a clean guitar arpeggios at the beginning with a, a, a an esoteric delay effect on it as well. Um, what, I, what I will say as well, uh, the vocals are very strong on this album. He's a rock singer. And let's be honest, if you are a rock singer, you have to be good, don't you? There's just no place to hide. In metal, if you've got a good set of lungs on you, or you know the techniques to scream, you don't necessarily have to be a good singer. So again, Jonathan Seal demonstrates here, really good singer. But one thing that lets him down, how many times does he use the phrasing of the guitar chords to base his vocal lines on that and just follow them? Does it too often for me? Um, you know, one of the few songs where he doesn't do that is track number six, She. Almost reminds me of the folk moments of that Metallica song, Call of the Cthulhu. Very similar, um, just slowed down a bit. Uh, but I like how the, the 
they're quite playful with it and then they step on the distortion don't they um two and a half minutes into the song so that one's more unpredictable for me but in conclusion before i pass it over to you guys um good listen you don't need to listen to it more than once to understand it i don't think there's enough in there that you need to that, that invites you for a repeat listen nothing to unravel if you want good heavy rock with metallic undertones I won't even call it an update on Black Sabbath. I don't think they're using the down tuning in in, in in any way that you would say is modern. And that actually might stand them in good stead, to be honest. They might not be caught on the wrong side of history when all these um, eight and nine string guitar bands in 10 years from now, they'll be looking back thinking, wow, we did probably concentrate too much on that in our music. So they stay clear of that, um, but nothing special for me. I think I'd enjoy these more on a live stage rather than putting the headphones on and sitting through one of their albums. Okay, fair enough. Um, I guess I'll go next and then uh, Andy, you can wrap it up from your viewpoint. Um, so before I tell you what I thought of the album, I we do sometimes talk about how you can th- you can prejudge something depending on how you're feeling. And so when I saw that the description of the uh, music was Doom, I was just like, oh, I can't do dealing with Doom. I was in no moods at all to do a reaction or a review of the album. But I knew that we needed to do it. So I was like, okay, do you know what? We just have to get on with it, do it. Um, so I thought that's important to say that because it made it can sometimes make you judge something when you're in that mindset in the wrong way. Um, no, I listened to the album four or five times and I'm glad that I did because the first listen, I kind of skipped over it. I didn't really take much into it. Uh, and I think you do need to listen to it two or three times because there are certain things that annoy you or put you off about certain tracks and that disappears by the second or third or fourth listen. And you can actually enjoy the songs as you go in there. Um, I think it's very clear that what they are trying to be is a more is is the next Black Sabbath as far as what they're playing because I mean if we look at it this way Iron Void Iron Man Into the Void I mean come on they are literally just nicking parts of Black Sabbath songs two great songs as well <laughs> two great songs but let, so I I even read the the out uh, the band title was like okay so black sabbath then all right okay and then you start listening to it and then you're going grave and i'm like oh okay we're, we're getting really into topical content of it and it kicked in and i'm not gonna go track by track but yeah grave dance i thought had a cool groove reminded me of planet fatal one of our favorite uh local bands uh had one of their tracks real kind of stone of doom rock uh living on earth is pure sabbath i mean that literally is a sabbath track yeah. Um, I thought it might as well have been if you just took if you just took uh, Ozzy and put him there singing that is Black Sabbath. Um, it's basically just Sabbath, bloody Sabbath, isn't it? Yeah, that album in one song. Uh, Pandora's box really catchy. The only thing I did, uh, I don't know if you guys picked this one up, but he even does some of the Ozzy Osbourne uh, vocal ad libs. That oh yeah, dude, literally yes. does this on Pandora's box. I'm like. Hang on, that that is an Aussie ad lib <laughs> that you're doing on, at points on it. So, to me, I think if if they say if they were to go out and say, no, 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 we're nothing to do about Sabbath. They're, they're just something that we're influenced by. I'd be, I'd have to call them on that and go, that's bullshit, guys. You know that's bullshit. You are literally doing a Sabbath esque band, and that's fine as long as that's what we I kind of we appreciate about them, uh, and they do it very well uh the bass lines with it were really good uh love the drumming guitar riffs were cool catchy uh the standout tracks for me as i said were grave dance living on earth pandora's box lords of the wasteland or lords of wasteland the slave one were really good um she bloody awful song couldn't stand that track oh, uh, i like that it, one i, I think i i to really me good. i had to listen to that four times i just wanted to go and kill myself at the end of that that's probably why I like. I'm sorry. I just that was it was horrendous. That's my. <laughs> please just don't ever play that for me again. I'll walk out the gig. Uh, the other two were. Uh, can't read my own right now. Hey, sorry. Can I just? Um, do you know? Getting back to she. Did that not remind you of Marillion, in the Fish era? I thought you would like that. It With was just. It, was, it just wasn't very good. Really it sounded like a band's demo that they were just trying to get some ideas of a song and i'm like why is this on the album it doesn't feel finished 
Uh, and Last Rites, I didn't like Last Rites at all. I thought they were trying to go down a kind of creepy uh, theatrical sort of track uh, with the storytelling. And I, it just didn't work for me. Um, so it's kind of it's a like th- two thirds of the album really liked the other third not a big fan of. Uh, from a vocal point of view, he's got good voice. Uh, needs some more variation for me. Um, there were points in the songs I was like, I can hear everything. Everything you're doing is in time. Everything's in key, but I'm not feeling any passion or energy behind it. I don't feel what the song's about coming through in the vocal. Um, in the vocal tone or anything like that so i didn't it just didn't engage me enough vocally but it's not because he's a bad vocalist or anything like that it was just the overall performance of it just didn't uh connect as well i and i think that's because when i was listening to it i was actually thinking about sabbath and thinking about how we're even from the dio the gillian era and of the um totally obviously, <laughs> yeah well we'll skip that one but uh, yeah and the aussie era you got that passion in the voice you could hear that kind of energy but there were sometimes like if you listen to early sabbath even aussie was kind of a bit flat at points and you didn't get that connection so all in all yeah not a bad album we'll do our scoring at the end of it obviously but uh we'll let andy kind of give his final feedbacks on it Mr. Doom Metal Flag Waver, here he comes. Absolutely. <laughs> um, just sort of two points before I go into my review of the album. I would put this as sort of traditional doom metal and the sort of album, sort of band that if you're wanting to move into, you know, doom, this is the sort of group that you should be following into, I think. Um, mm. You know, it is traditional straight forward doom. It's not your sub genres like funeral doom or drone or you know, any of the extreme stuff. This is a good gateway band in, into the, the genre of doom metal. I mean, we mentioned some names who are obviously clear influences. I I am not familiar enough with Black Sabbath's whole back catalogue to sort of make such comparisons, but I've got bands like Pentagram, Count Raven, uh, Cathedral, um, hmm. Nightfall Era, uh, Candlemas. So they're obviously drawing their influences from the, the gods of doom metal. And going back to the vocal side of things, like you from i mean I'm, I'm a fan of this band let's get out of there straight away especially the last album avalon based on the legend of king arthur based on uh, like the music videos the live clips and the promo shots i've seen i thought jonathan seal was the main vocalist and, and steve wilson joins in on sort of choruses and backing vocals um but listening to it and actually speaking to jonathan himself he's confirmed that Steve Wilson does more songs than he does. Oh, the, okay. the, the sort of more um, operatic, higher range vocals is Steve Wilson. Jonathan does a sort of gruffer vocals, for example. Grave Dance is Steve. Um, Lord of the Wasteland is Steve. And, you know, there's a sort of even split of the tracks across the album. So they, they sort of share the vocal duties and they do chorus and backing vocals together. And, and you know, I, I think it works really well. I mean, uh, like you, Dave, I think sort of Grave Dance and Lord of the Wasteland are, you know, the best tracks. She's probably one of the, the sort of less uh, enjoyable ones for me, but I, I thought it was a, a really, really good album. You know, what I was expecting and what I was hoping for, well produced, clear, crisp vocals, memorable, catchy riffs. Um, there's, you know, some, as I say, there's some influences that you can pick out. I mean, I've also got a, a, a surprising one here, Last Rites, which is which is a song that I don't think I've been particularly fans of. I've noted down that there's like a, a sort of double v- vibrato note type affair going on, which sort of uh, made me think of Bruce Hamilton from Jebel Dan. You know, I can just picture him going there, yeah. you know. Uh, I don't know if he picks I'm up on that, Bruce. but I, I think this is a, a fantastic album. There's, there's different effects, you know, there's bass intros, um, there's sort of 70s, Wah wah effects on certain passages. And one thing I want to ask you about, Kirk, I don't know if this, there's a particular term for this. It's something that sort of bands such as um, St. Vitus have done, and I know he's on some sort of Pantera tracks. With a band like this, where they've only got one guitarist, they kind of put the live feel of a song on, on the record, i.e., there's a solo, but no rhythm guitar track in the background, just the, the bass playing. I mean, it doesn't happen throughout every song there's a, there's a couple of examples of that mm-hmm. is that a sort of recognized term or, or style within metal and music 
Yeah, Dave, or just Dave, something Dave, some bands adopt on, on certain occasions. Yeah, Dave uses it. I, we call that a guitar dropout, don't we, Dave? You know, yeah. where you'd normally expect the rhythm to come in, but you can rely on bass. And you're right, Andy. Yeah. Uh, Sabbath certainly um, have no overdubs, do they, on their first six albums? Pantera very rarely do. The, the, to me, the band, the best band to hear for this, where they get it just right, is King's X. I think I think they are absolutely yeah. perfect with that. How they get it in the mix. They're three piece, aren't they? Check out, yeah, go and check out. Yeah, they're a three piece. Check out their first five albums. Um, they're, they're phenomenal. Yeah, you're right. That's one of the best features of it, Andy, as well, isn't it? Because Jonathan Seal, the bass playing, he is not just playing root notes following the chords. I, I found that quite riveting uh, and very expressive in his playing. And yeah, and the, the, the solos are really emotive, aren't they? It's a emotive blues rock and. Um, uh, progressive blues, you'd say, wouldn't you? You know, like that late 60s progressive blues that Tony Iommi um, helped to propel and then and then move it into what we now know as heavy metal. Um, just one thing I would say about this. Um, you know, you said they're a good gateway band. I agree. This is an easy listen. I don't mean that the, the music is serene and calm and, and you can chill out. I just mean it rocks out. I've heard it before, so I know what to expect. And they do a bloody good job of it. But why I said I, I wouldn't really need to return to it is in the same week, I've just reviewed that new album from Ahab, that German avant-garde doom band. And that's an hour and six minutes. And I've listened to it five times and I want to keep revisiting it. It's like, even if it was longer, I would still listen to it if it's an hour and 20. And I can't say that with this one. I could easily just have this on in the background and think every so often, oh, I like the riff. I like the motive they're using there. Good tempo change there. But it's not doing anything to... Uh, to really excite me, if that makes sense. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, just to, just to you know, give, give the band a few more sort of plus points and plaudits. I mean, the, you know, Laws of the Wasteland, I think it's a song that we all like. I mean, it's got epic vocals. It's almost like a sing-along chorus. I think it's going to be like a live favourite. You know, you can just see people banging their heads and, and, and banging their fists to that one. But I, I, I really enjoyed it from start to finish, to be honest. Yeah, and they've got something to say, haven't they? They're not just hiding behind fantasy themes or obscure imagery you know the, like that song that we were talking about you know grave dance is clearly an attack isn't it on government overreach during the covid19 lockdown so i'm glad you picked up, up on that because I, I, I wouldn't have done i mean slave one i saw the title i thought is that is that about boba fett's spaceship but i don't think it is <laughs> possibly what, what did you take from that kirk i i, I, I it's because you can actually get the lyrics on uh encyclopedia metallum so when i was listening to it i thought okay that song's like oh well let's see what the what the content is here and uh yeah very impressed in, in that regards thank you Okay, right, so we need to score it. So, as always, with our album reviews, we score it in four, out of four different categories. So, it's either a bin it, a trade it, a stream it, or a buy it. So, let's just kick it over to Kirk to kick it off, as you were the first to review. So, is it a bin it, a trade it, stream it, or buy it from you? For me, it's a trade it. I could uh, offer it to someone like Bruce from Jevodan, but his collection is just do metal, so I don't think I'd get anything uh back in exchange <laughs> but no sorry we, we mentioned bruce once so i thought i'd mention him again uh so yeah it's a trade it for me there, there are some good moments on there um but I, I don't see myself going back and listening to this fair enough in my case it would be a stream it uh there's some good tracks on there as we've put out grave dance and living on earth and the others i just definitely wouldn't stream she again but uh pretty much anything else on the album i would be happy to stream it uh, and for you, Andy, what's your scores on the doors? I'm obviously going to buy it. It's a buy it, of course it is. It's a. I don't know if we. That, what does that make it for the channel? I don't think it's this. It's an well, undecided well, the, this time. In, in the middle, the, the average of the mean average of that is a stream. It then, isn't it? it yeah, I guess for, as a channel, it was a stream. It so it's still a recommendation. So from the channel, it is a recommendation to check out Iron Void and the album four uh check out all the songs because between us we liked every song on the album in different <laughs> ways or another so it's it's definitely a worth checking out and there we should go. just mention dave that it's out on friday the 27th of january on shadow kingdom records uh obviously it's going to be on all the major streaming platforms as well okay there we go you heard it there first or second or wherever else you might have heard about this uh there you go now if you like this video please do like share and subscribe we'll see you on another video sometime very soon uh, take care